Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. What's up, guys? Welcome to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. I'm very excited about today's interview with Chelsea Newton from the University of Georgia. Can't wait for you to hear that conversation. Before we get to Chelsea, a couple things we want to pass along to you. The first is our website, sportspectrum.com. Make sure you're checking out our website each and every day for new content, including this podcast, every single podcast. We have daily devotionals there as well, and then different stories, content on the intersection of sports and faith, all available at sportspectrum.com. And a lot of those stories and the guests that we have on this show come from you directly. And so that's why we provide our email address, jason at sportspectrum.com. Jason at sportspectrum.com. You can email me directly with any guest ideas, any topics, any stories that we should be covering here at Sports Spectrum. You can email me, jason at sportspectrum.com. We are presented today by our friends at Compassion International. And right now, children around the world living in poverty are facing unimaginable circumstances as a result of COVID-19. Communities in poverty are facing shutdowns and restrictions just like we are, but without any safety net. And the, listen to this, 70,000 kids potentially without a sponsor because of COVID-19 from Compassion International. So kids are facing hunger, starvation, risking infection. Parents are forced to make unthinkable Choices, COVID-19 has multiplied their needs exponentially and they need help. That's where you and I can come in with compassion and the Fill the Stadium Initiative, a pro-athlete-led initiative raising critical resources for 70,000 kids and their families impacted by COVID. Every empty seat represents one child who needs support for the critical next 12 months. You can learn more by going to fillthestadium.com and you can donate right there. FillTheStadium.com. This is a stadium that cannot remain empty. Today on Sports Spectrum, Chelsea Newton is our guest, the University of Georgia assistant basketball coach and recruiting coordinator. Chelsea played her own college basketball, had a really good career at Rutgers under the Hall of Famer Vivian Stringer, and she has coached an impressive list of 14 WNBA players and 17 all-conference selections in just the 12 seasons that she's coached now, both with Rutgers and with Georgia. During her playing days, after playing at Rutgers, she was selected in the second round of the 2005 WNBA draft by the Sacramento Monarchs, and she was a member of that 2005 WNBA World Champion Monarchs team, also named to the 2005 WNBA All-Rookie team, and in 2007, she was second team all-defense in the WNBA, and then played internationally for a few years in Israel, Poland, and Italy, and then became a coach. And she wasn't looking to become a coach, she'll tell you about that, but became a coach in 2010 with Rutgers. Chelsea Newton, this is a really good conversation with Chelsea. I love talking to her about coaching and building relationships. I think you'll love hearing what she has to say right now on Sports Spectrum. Take a listen. Chelsea Newton, welcome to Sports Spectrum. How are you? Thanks, Jason, for having me. Uh, super excited to to just talk and, and talk to stuff I love. <laughs> I love it. Basketball and Jesus. That's what we're about. Let's talk about it. Well, let, let me ask you this. Let's start with recruiting because I'm really fascinated. You're, part of your role, obviously, is you're a coach, but you're mm-hmm. also the recruiting coordinator. And I think if you're a coach for any college team, uh, recruiting is sort of part of the game here. Yeah. I'm curious what recruiting was like this past year in 2020 in the midst of a pandemic. What oh, was that goodness. like? Had to be crazy. It was, it was, it, you know, um, it was when, when everything shut down, I literally just come uh, from doing a in-home, an in-home visit in New York. Um, and so we were going on spring break and, and just, you know, hearing people saying, Oh, is, is there possible? Sh-? Well, we didn't really know shutdown, you know, it was like the first tournament game got canceled and everybody's like what is happening you know right. and, and and so um we still weren't quite sure what was going on but we were in the midst of trying to sign a, a huge class for 2021 and um 
we we needed to do on campus visits. We needed to do official visits. You know, that's that's our thing. So yeah. uh, when when it was March and when everything started to shut down, I think we were still in shock. Like this isn't happening. And it still took us a while to figure out, like, we're really not going to be recruiting this year. So we have to figure out, like, you have to change the game. You got to reinvent how this stuff happens. So then it became Zoom presentations and just Zoom meetings and just, you know, trying to figure out how we can bring Georgia to someone's home via Mm -hmm. computer, you Mm -hmm. know? And so um, we were able to redirect and, you know, we, we feel like we did a pretty good job with, with actually, you know, getting the kids we were supposed to get. And as far as the next class, not, not being able to actually go out in July and physically see people. Um, we're grateful that we've done our, our work early. So we sort of knew who we wanted to recruit in the next class and who we're recruiting now. So, you know, it, it wasn't like we had to identify talent. That was the, the the great thing about it. We didn't need to identify talent. Now we're just trying to build relationships without physically seeing them. So technology, um, if you're not advanced, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who were behind the eight ball that were catching up or trying to catch up quickly uh, yeah. once the pandemic hit. How important yeah. is it for you? I think I know the answer, but I, I just want you to talk a little bit more about integrity here in the midst of recruiting because mm-hmm. it can be a real cutthroat area, mm-hmm. right? Dog eat dog world, as they say, mm-hmm. trying to go after um, different recruits and different people, a lot of people yeah. going after them. How important is that for you to kind of maintain that integrity in the midst of such a such a really I, I guess just crazy kind of yeah. world of recruiting. You know, it, it, it can be difficult. It really can um, because your competitive nature comes out, you know, and there's times where um, you have to, you know, check yourself, you yeah. know, you have to really go back to the drawing board and like, what's important. What are we doing here? What's the ultimate goal when it comes to what our impact is as coaches is not to get the best talent by any means necessary. You know what I mean? It's about building relationships and and uh, doing what's best for the recruit, you know, and their family as well as your program. But, you know, what's amazing, too, is just the the way that we do things at the University of Georgia, especially with Joni as I lead. You know, she she is about integrity. So it's so easy when you're when your boss, your, your head coach, your friend is also about integrity. So it makes everything else, you know, because. To have to go against the grain is is very difficult, especially in this business. Um, you'll find yourself, if you don't, out of a job, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it's important to surround yourself with like-minded people. And I think Joni has done that. And it is um, it is a blessing and a breath of, fresh, fresh, breath of fresh air to be with somebody that thinks we all think the same. You yeah, know. and you say that just Georgia way, right? It's not how we do things. Describe that way. Describe that. Um, I think we are when you, when we, when I can describe women's basketball here at Georgia, um, it is family first. I mean, family first. There is a purpose for everything that we do. Uh, Joni is huge on a community, huge on service, huge on culture, fit. Um, we're a praying team. We have Bible study team. We're a Bible study staff. Throughout the pandemic, we met every Wednesday or Thursday morning with our with our chaplain, and um, it was consistent. And we we believe that you know through hard times you got to pray through it. Through great times you got to pray through it, and that has been a motto. And everybody that's around us knows that. And so, in order for us to feel comfortable and to be able to function the way we need to as a staff and as a team. We also have to have like-minded people who who believe in the culture that that Joni has established here. So you've been around, obviously, basketball for a while. We'll talk about your journey in a second, but I'm just curious what your definition of a great coach is. Like, what do you think makes a great coach, in your opinion? Wow, a great coach um, is able to meet players in their staff where they are, hmm. where they are, and doesn't matter what that is mentally, physically, emotionally. Being able to meet them there and um, reaching them. And when you're able to reach them, you're able to get them to function, perform, um, to be better people, academically, athletically. Um, To me, that's what makes a great coach, because I see a lot of people who have a lot of wins, but 
Um, I think our jobs are, ha- has a lot more to do with everything other than wins. And so when you can impact people and be successful, I think that's a great coach. Well, you said that word, successful. So what's wins. success? <laughs> wins. wins okay. You know, wins is important. Now, you can't keep a job without winning games. <laughs> it's just the truth. You well, know, you can, that's it. you can do a lot of uh, amazing things off the court and in people's lives. But if you don't have wins in that column, um, that, that, you know, ultimately is what, what we get measured on. And that's the hard part of the job when you know you're trying to do it the right way and you're impacting lives and you're taking care of, of players and family. You, you, you know, you're doing all of the things that nobody sees. Yeah. Nobody cares about community service, but you're doing it because we know it's important. Um, and you're doing things the right way, morally and ethically. You know, people don't care about that. They care about the wins. But again, we've stuck to what we believed in and, and we're seeing success you know, we've seen success over the six years that we've all been together, but we're seeing even more success um, after just continuing to, to, to put one foot in front of the other. Chelsea Newton is our guest here today on Sports Spectrum. She's with the University of Georgia, assistant basketball coach and recruiting coordinator. All right. So let's learn a little bit about Chelsea Newton growing up. Monroe, Louisiana, right? You're a Louisiana girl. Yeah. Um, Monroe, which is small town I was literally just talking about Monroe last night and I'm like it's a big city in Louisiana people stop playing with us they don't even talk (laughs) about us we need to talk about Monroe (laughs) um but no growing up in Monroe parents um are from originally from Arkansas and uh, I have an older sister and just the two of us I'm the baby girl um and my parents you know my mom's a psychology dad psychologist dad and electrician so you can imagine growing up in a house with uh, a a child psychologist so (laughs) I always had to be on my p's and q's you know felt like I was being monitored or is this a study like what's going on here you know so um but so grateful for my family uh my parents at a young age um it's showed me Christ had me in church um the basic the base is like, it, 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 I tell people now, you don't understand how grateful you are to be able to grow up in a house where Jesus is the first thing, you know what I mean? Like, because some people don't get that at all and they're mm-hmm. fighting as an adult to try to figure it out. And that's tough, but to have a base is um, what I'm forever grateful for, for my parents through everything that, you know, we've been through, but I uh, grew up in Louisiana, went to Carroll high school uh, it was an all black high school, which was rough around the edges, the best mm-hmm. way to say it. But I, I am for grateful because it molded uh, me as far as the toughness. Um, my parents had already instilled everything that I needed from a uh, just personal academic standpoint. So when I got to a school that just looked a little bit different than what I was used to, that I was able to still maintain who I was, be tough and um, I think it's one of the main reasons why I was able to go to Rutgers and be as successful with Coach Stringer. It molded me into that person. So, um, it, you know, in high school, was FCA president, went to FCA camp a couple of times in New Orleans. Um, and, and that was like a turning point for me with just establishing who I was as, a, as a, now my first time realizing my connection with, with Christ, like that was the first establishment that I'm like, man, okay, this is not my parents. This is me. You know, this is my relationship. Um, and so grateful for that experience. And then, you know, going, like I said, going on to Rutgers and, and, you know, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask you, was there a culture shock going to college, especially going to an all black high school and college is a mixture of everyone and every race yeah. and creed and religion and everything. And obviously having coach Viv, well, I want to ask you about Vivian Stringer in a second. Yeah. Uh, she's a legend, obviously, but coming to college, was that a little bit of a culture shock for you at first? It, the, the first culture shock was leaving Louisiana, going to New Jersey. That was <laughs> completely <laughs> different. I yeah. mean, it was something, you know, that I wasn't quite prepared for, but excited that I took that journey. But yeah, it was a total culture shock. Like, you know, like I said, Carol was, and you're going to the school and you're seeing the, seeing the same person every time, every day. It, 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 it's, it's surreal, but I also loved every moment of it. You know, being around people that looked like me and being sure. able to learn culture and understand things that I just wasn't privy to because I didn't grow up like most of the kids that, that were in the school with me. And so 
uh, getting, to, getting to Rutgers, which is the one of the most diverse universities in the country. I mean, mm-hmm. you get to see every race, every religion. Like I learned so much and I was in shock and still in shock, probably my, by my senior year. It just the difference, the difference of just the human race. Like we are all different, but it was so cool. Um, it was a great experience. And I, I, for that reason, like, I feel like I can go anywhere and live anywhere, any part of the country or the world and be able to survive. Because of that experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Talk about Coach Stringer. Uh, maybe, do you remember the first time you ever met her? Yeah, I do. Tell first time I story. saw her, I was yeah. at a camp in uh, Pittsburgh. It was the Adidas All-American camp. And I just saw this lady just sort of, just sort of winking and staring at me. And I was like, who is this? And, but it was, it was just the sweetest little look. And so uh, I remembered that. And then I remember Coach Law, who was the assistant and she had like this little, this little high top fade. And I just thought it was the coolest little haircut, but she was just, they just were, they stood out in that moment. But our first conversation, like Coach Stringer, um, just such a, just, the beautiful voice, just the light voice. Like when she talked to you, she captured you. It was almost like a whisper every time she talked to you and she captured you and she cared about everything other than basketball. Mm. And I think that was the one. And, you know, you listen to her story, you know, with her family, her husband, her daughter, there's different stories. And you just, you're like, man, I want to help her be successful. You know, like I want her to win. So I want to go be with her. Wherever she is, I want to be with her. Yeah. And that was my first experience. And uh, of course, when I got to Rutgers, she was not that little uh, sweet lady that I saw. She was about her business. And and I'm grateful for that because I would not be coaching if it wasn't for Coach Stringer. Wow. That's an awesome impact that somebody can make. How about off the court? Just the lessons that maybe Coach Stringer just instilled in the four years you were there to be able to kind of say, okay, I can go out and not just be a successful coach, but a successful person, a a successful, you know, woman of Christ. Uh, Perseverance. Uh, That was the thing that I learned the most. I mean, if you listen to her story and she, she has some dramatic things happen to her from beginning to end. Uh, I say to end, but from beginning to the end when I met her, Um, but she had just, she had just persevered one foot in front of the other. And she always, we always led with Christ. It, you know, we, we went to church as a team mm. and that was important for me as well. You know, Pastor Soares, who I am still super close with at First Baptist Church, Lincoln Gardens in Jersey. Um, and he spoke to our team during the pandemic here at Georgia for us. You know, just he's been invo- involved in a lot of different uh, racial, social injustice, you know, platforms. And he was able to speak to our team. And but she was introducing people like that, that that helped you along the way. You know, she wasn't always the one doing everything, but she introduced us to people that were able to help us along the way. And just to watch her do what she's done, you know, losing her husband at such a younger age with three young kids and still being able to persevere and just push through. Like, I'm like, man, I can make it through anything. If she can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Did you know you always wanted to coach? Like, No, I did not want to coach. (laughs) I just like, want to play, right? <laughs> I wanted to play and I wanted to be in sports administration. You know, okay. I my intentions when I, you know, graduated school, I was like, I'm, I'm just going to hang out a semester and relax, get my brain a rest. And then I'll go, you know, I wanted to get an MBA and wanted to get into administration. Um, I wanted to be in my mind. I was going to be a general manager of somebody's professional sports team. Didn't care what. I just knew I wanted to be in sports. Mm hmm. But I got drafted, so plans changed. <laughs> yep. And um, and I would, you know, the, the after my first year, I went back to Rutgers in 2006, 2007, during my off season. I didn't go overseas. And Coach Stringer, um, you know, we I got a job doing like player development or something on the staff, and it happened to be the year that we went to the national championship. And so that was my first introduction to coaching. Um, and I was like, nope absolutely not. This is not what I want to do. It's way too much work. This is like not what I want to do. You know, I want to, I want to be able to, to, to move around, be around basketball, but not live in it, you know? Yeah. And so um, at the end of that year, I was like, no, nah, coach, I'm good. I don't think I want to do this anymore. And I continue to play. And every year she would call and say, Chelsea, you should be coaching. I'm telling you, you should be coaching. And I'm like, yeah, no, not doing it. All right. Mm-hmm. Talk to you later. And uh, she called back, Chelsea, you should be coaching. I'm like, no, nah, doing it coach I love you but I'm not I'm not coming back (laughs) and so around my fourth or fifth year last year playing overseas 
through prayer and reading, like I just kept having this overwhelming uh, feeling of you're not supposed to be playing basketball anymore. And I'm like, I, I was always injured anyway. So I was like, okay, you know, this is a good sign. And Coach Stringer wouldn't let it go. She kept saying, are you ready? And I'm like, no. And so finally, maybe the last month of me playing in Italy that year, I, was, I called Coach and I'm like, hey, I, I think this is my last year. I don't know. And so um, once I finished my overseas season, I was, I was in Seattle and I was in training camp. Day two, I remember the ball, ball rolling past me and looking at the floor, just looking at the ball like, I don't want to dive. Like, I had no <laughs> desire to get on the floor. Yeah. And so um, Jenny Busek, who was a uh, spiritual mentor, like we were really close um, as a head coach in Sacramento, and she was my assistant in Seattle. After the end of that practice, I walked up to her and she was looking at me and was like, what's going on? And I'm like, I'm done. And she was like, I can see it in the countenance on your face. Like, I know it. And so we walked in, told Brian. I was like, I'm done. Hmm. Weight lifted off. Um, I called Coach Stringer. I was like, hey, I retired. She was like, all right. And a month later, I was at Rutgers. <laughs> coach. When we make plans, God laughs, right? That's oh. kind of the... That's kind of the moniker that you hear from a lot of people, especially those in, in faith. And isn't that the truth? It sounds like that's exactly what happened with your world. When I, when I tell you every stepping stone, it, it has been the same thing. Like it's just been this overwhelming feeling, which I know is the spirit. I know it's God talking to me. Sometimes I've been very obedient and a lot of times I have not. And I've paid for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I wasn't supposed to be doing that. Right. But um you know, it, it, it's been it's been surreal. Like every place that I've been, like I know it's been God ordained. A quick break to tell you about our friends at Compassion International, sponsors and partners with us here at Sports Spectrum. They do such important work. It's an organization that we care so much about. And as you know, Compassion works with kids in poverty all around the world, meeting their basic needs like food, clean water, and education so they can not only survive, but reach their full potential. On this past spring of 2020, as everybody knows, with the pandemic, most of the events that Compassion International relies on to help sponsor these children in crisis were canceled due to COVID-19, leaving nearly 70,000 kids in desperate need of help. Now that number, 70,000, also happens to be the average size of many pro football stadiums that were once filled and now sit mostly empty. Each of the 70,000 empty seats represents a child in crisis who needs you, who needs us to step up and help fill the stadium. Now think about this, for a cost of a couple tickets, food and drinks to the game that very few can attend right now, you can help one kid for an entire year. So I'm doing this. I, I've sponsored a child through Compassion and helped fill the stadium for one year's worth of food, education, clean water, all of that, one year's worth of funding. You need to check this out at fillthestadium.com. It's a great place to go. All of the information is right there, and you can donate and help release a child from poverty. Fillthestadium.com. This is a stadium that cannot remain empty. Fillthestadium.com. Chelsea Newton's joining us here on Sports Spectrum. I love your Twitter handle, by the way, because it has... First Peter 2, 24 through 25 in that handle. And it, it, some people laugh or will say, oh, it's just a Bible verse. But I know for the most part, a lot of people don't just put Bible verses to put Bible verses in their yeah. handle. That's an intentional thing that a lot of people yeah. do. So tell me about that verse, what it means to you. You know, it's, it's um, I've had up and downs in my faith. You know, I've sure. been like, you know, hey, let's read, let's, and been inspirational, led chaplains in the WNBA. And then there's been moments where I, I just, I lost. I just felt lost. You know what I mean? And it and it, was, it lasted for quite some time where I'm just up and down because of my own personal choices, fighting, fighting the feeling, fighting the spirit talking to me. And um, and over the pandemic, the last two years, actually, um, Joni has been an intricate part in, in everything that's sort of been happening to me spiritually, um, just because I've been able to see an example every single day. Mm. You know, when you're around Karen Lane, Robert, Mo our entire staff uh, to be around spiritual people every single day helps uh, when they say it's about who you're around. Oh, my goodness. It, it is. Um, and so 
you know, I was just going through it when I was at a low, low last year, uh, probably, yeah, 2019 from like probably most of the year. And uh, I mean, people like Joni literally sent me an email and was like, hey, uh, we got you an appointment with a therapist this this week. You know, mm-hmm. and of course, it was, you know, when they asked me, what you know, what's your preference? And I'm like, of course, Christian therapy and was able to do some therapy that just. And it's still with her. And when I tell you, I I, I walk around with my sh- shirt from Jackie Hill Perry, Jesus and Therapy. G- I like three of them. Jesus and Therapy. Like, <laughs> it, it is the best thing ever. Wow. And so it was able to to get me grounded again. And um, and there's just different people that I, w- I was meeting along the way and just the love. And so the pandemic slowed my work life down in order for me to really be able to, 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 to dive in and just intense relationship building is what I call it with Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it has been surreal. And so that, that, that verse to me is more about um, just coming back to the shepherd. You know, I was lost, you know what I mean? Like, and that's what I felt that I was just a lost sheep that, that knew it, that felt him, but just didn't know how to, to make the steps to rebuild the relationship. And so that's what that verse means to me. Well, that that low point too, I think a lot of us all go through those moments yeah. where maybe it's just a mental lapse where we're just kind of not feeling it. Mm-hmm. Maybe we actually go through real difficult situations, whether we lose a loved one or we go through a, mm-hmm. a hard breakup and a divorce or something like that, that a lot of people could go through. I want you to take me as deep as you will into the idea of therapy, because that gets a bad rap yeah, from a lot sure. of people, whether it's the world or whether it's yeah. in the faith, like, oh, you don't need therapy. You need Jesus. And it's like, yeah. no, nah, I like that. Jesus plus therapy. Why was that <laughs> so important? And and why would you now want to recommend that to others who might be going through it themselves? You know, I, I think sometimes we just need to talk, you know, we need to talk. We need to talk through things. We need to be able to verbalize in a safe space. Mm. And I verbalize the Christ. I verbalize all the time, but there's the addition of human relationship, human contact, being able to sit down and look at another person and have a a safe space conversation. And a lot of it is I talk myself through stuff, you know, she's there to direct and say, Hey, how about just think about this? But um, that therapeutic, that, that part, you know, just being able to have that conversation in the safe space is therapeutic. And that is, I think more than anything makes you hear what you're saying out loud and like, Oh, that doesn't even sound right. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Give some advice, advice, try some things out. But um, therapy has just been able to allow me to process things in a different way, just another way, not necessarily um, giving me advice on what I should be doing. It's just, hey, how about this thought process? How about this? And and that is what's really helped me. And I'll tell anybody, whether you're in a great space or whether you're in a low, you know, a bottom, um, being able to talk through problems, there's nothing wrong with it, you know, and we pray before and we pray afterwards. So it has, it has nothing to do with whether or not, you know, Jesus is our therapist. He is my therapist. And I also have another therapist here on earth. Yeah. No, and that's okay. That's absolutely okay. I wonder for for young people, you deal with a lot of young people uh, as a coach, obviously 18, 19, 20 years old, and they're bringing baggage with them. They're bringing you know, their life that they've walked through with them. And in some cases, maybe they've never had that until they mm-hmm. get to college and now they got to grow up and they got to go yep. through real life lessons. So walk us through kind of playing that role, not just as a coach, but a lot of ways as a teacher, a mentor, a friend, that some of these young kids, when they come through coming out of high school, they're the, they're the best player probably at their school as well. Amen. So a lot of, a lot of sure. pats on the back and they come sure. and they can get humbled because they're playing now with a lot of people who are just as good and maybe even better than them in some cases. What's that process like when you're, you're kind of walking through, not just being a coach, because it's easy to say, you know, run this play the way it's supposed right. to be run, but there's a lot more to it, isn't there? Yeah, I think um, when we talk about like the culture and the fit and all of those things, but it's the relationship building. Like you'll hear us talk about relationship all the time in here um, because it's important. You can't expect to just direct someone and tell them, oh, this is what you should be doing. And this is how you should be doing it. 
on and off the court without really knowing them, without them knowing that you care, you know, without them trusting you. And I think um, also being transparent, like my, my players know, you know, they, they like, Oh, you're doing better. You know, cause I, I'm, I'm an aggressive coach. I like to talk. I like to yell. I like to get down. And so, you know, they're like, Oh, you, you, you're a mile today. Everything good. You know? So <laughs> they know, you know, yeah. the struggles they know, but, but we, we, we open them and welcome. I mean, we open them like uh, welcome them with open arms in reference to just like, let's talk about life, you know, but they have to know you care, you know, they have to know, that they can trust you with important information and that takes time. Um, and so, you know, we'll do whatever we need to do, whether it's let's go to dinner, let's, you know, sit around and just talk, let's watch TV, let's pray if we need to, whatever that needs to be. Like um, our thought process is just let the, let the Lord use us to be able to help them. And so, when we pray about it and we, before we make moves or we take, have those conversations, everything else is just easy. It's probably hard to, I have to imagine this year specifically because mm-hmm. of the pandemic and the restrictions and the, you know, the masks and not the, the large gatherings that you can have and the protocols and all of that that's been in place. You almost have to be even more intentional not to let anyone slip through the cracks because yeah. you kind of take that for granted in a normal year when the, when it's, when there isn't a pandemic, right? Yeah, you know, um, during the, when we were away and not able to come, we've been back on campus since end of June. So we were fortunate enough to be on campus and sort of stay on campus uh, for the most part yeah. since the end of June. But that time period from March until June, um, we were all, Joni was very intentional about every week making sure we were on Zooms with the players and we would discuss whatever the hot topics were and as well as, you know, play a game and just try to be personable as much as possible. And then um, we would also meet, you know, with our individual players academically. So we we did a lot of things to stay connected throughout the pandemic. And so when they got back on campus, it was more like, all right, we can't do the same thing like go to a, a restaurant at the time or go some, you know, we had to just be intentional. We would set up game nights. We would do different things that allowed us to be around each other and still have the personable feel. Um, so it, you had to be creative for sure. And so even now it's not back to normal, but we are definitely around each other and able to really have conversation a lot more now. So uh, we feel like we, we, we are pushing through the pandemic as yeah. best as possible. As we all are. Chelsea Newton has been our guest here on Sports Spectrum. Last question I want to ask you has to do with uh, lessons. And Mm -hmm. I look back at 2020. We're now in 2021. Looking back now at 2020. And it was such a just wacky year. I mean, the pandemic aside, right? We had racial unrest. We had a political divide. We had so much going on, you know, even a faith divide in some cases because we couldn't go to church a lot of places in this country. When you look back, what's the great lesson that the Lord taught you in 2020? What was he teaching you? What was he showing you when you look back? Oh, man, I would say one thing first is perspective. All right. Yeah. You know, having perspective. And uh, one of my what I tell myself when I get up one foot in front of each one foot in front of the other. Every day is a new day. All right. Every day is a new um, I, I would like to say, you know, battle. And so to start your your day, praying first and thanking him first, because there's so much to be thankful for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I've tried to approach each day that way to win that particular day and to push forward. And, that you know, perseverance is important, but it it. I think 2020 brought so much, but for me, 2020 probably was the biggest blessing because of the pandemic, because of slowing like down and realizing you don't have to go a hundred miles per hour to get a job done, or you don't have to be here, there and everywhere, slow down. And so um, with that being said, I I just think 2021 is going to be an amazing year for the world. (laughs) <laughs> I hope so. I mean, it, it can't get worse, I don't think, than what we just all went through. And and obviously, I think the faith aspect has to really help too, Chelsea. Right? Like the fact that our faith is in something bigger than what this world can offer, that for me personally, that's helped me get through this knowing that, yes, there's a lot of pain, there's a heart, lot of heartache, there's yeah. a lot of 
um, bad things that have happened, if you want to look at it from a worldly perspective. But my faith isn't in this world. That's yeah, got to have helped you, right? You know, what? one of the things that I also say is, um, you know, we always want a miracle, but we don't want to go any through, any, any, through anything to get the miracle. Yes. You know? And we we want we want the miracle, but we want to we want to stay over here and just <laughs> like yeah, I want that, you know. So I'm like, hey, we're 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 going through it as a society, as a world. You know what I mean? I I, I always pray for just a huge um, revival, and mm-hmm. I you know I'm praying that that that's what's gonna happen, you know. And so I think that that faith aspect of it is just it's gonna push us through, propel us. We'll be all right. That's well said. She is Chelsea Newton from the University of Georgia, assistant basketball coach and recruiting coordinator. We didn't even talk about your WNBA championship. That means we have to get you back on to tell some <laughs> WNBA and overseas stories, by the yeah. way. You got to play in places like Poland and Italy and Israel. So we'll have you back on, but we really do appreciate your time, Chelsea. Thanks so much for joining us here on the show today. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate you. And many thanks to Chelsea Newton from the University of Georgia for joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. She is just a lot of fun. She's got a lot of wisdom. You can see why she's so beloved at the University of Georgia as uh, an assistant basketball coach and recruiting coordinator uh, under Coach Joni. And then, of course, the lessons that she learned from Rutgers with Vivian Stringer, the Hall of Fame coach, as a mentor. Man, Chelsea's going to be a head coach someday if she wants to. I I just think that she's got so much wisdom and so much um, really poignant things to say. And uh, I would want my daughter to play for someone like Chelsea. There is no doubt about that. So we appreciate her joining us here today on the show. You can give her a follow on Twitter. She's at UGA Coach New. Any W U G A coach new just look look up Chelsea Newton and you'll find her there on Twitter let her know that you heard her story here on Sports Spectrum we thank Chelsea we also thank our friends at Compassion International check them out at fillthestadium.com that's the website we're sending people to because they got a great initiative right now with pro athletes raising critical resources for 70,000 kids and their families impacted by COVID fillthestadium.com Donate, man, I'm telling you, it'll be the best place that you could send your money right now to save these children in poverty, in crisis. Fillthestadium.com. Again, thanks for tuning in to today's show. We really do appreciate it. As we always say on the show, when it comes to the podcast, rate, review, subscribe. That is, I guess, the secret that people have told us that helps get the word out about the podcast. So whatever app you're listening to, click that subscribe button. If you can, take a few seconds and rate and review this show and then tell someone about Sports Spectrum and the Sports Spectrum podcast. We would love uh, to, to welcome in new listeners. Hopefully they have an interest in sports intersecting with faith in Jesus Christ right here on Sports Spectrum. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time right here on the show. My name is Jason. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.